Now, nuns have been singing in abbeys for hundreds of years. Not often, though, that you'll find them at Abbey Road Studios. That's a great picture, isn't it? The Poor Clare Sisters of Arundel, who scored a hit album four years ago, have now recorded their second one at the famous London venue. Let's have a listen to one of the tracks. Soothing way to uh, have your Sunday morning, wasn't it? That's oh, what I we all that. need on a weekend. Well, Sister Gabriel and Sister Leo join us now, I'm pleased to say. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good morning. For, thank you very much for joining us. Now, your debut album was a huge hit, wasn't it? Were you ever expecting that? We certainly were not. I think we could not believe the response that we got to our first album. It was extraordinary. Yeah, because it sold 80,000 copies, 60 million streams. It reached number five in the UK specialist classical chart uh, and, and was there for 19 weeks. What was it that inspired you to release it? It was to somehow reach people with some of the gifts that we're given of peace and, and living in harmony, trying to live in harmony. Um, and when the opportunity came up, we, a lot of discussions went in and we thought, yes, this is, this is the right time to try this. So it was a great surprise that it went off so well. And we never really thought about uh, making an album. We were actually approached by Decca Records and, um, and then we worked collaboratively with James Morgan and Juliet Poaching. And that combination of working together seemed to work very well. And um, we took that risk and that step forward. And light for the world came onto the scene, didn't it? Yeah, Sister Gabriel, I wanted to ask you that, actually. When you say you work collaboratively, what, what did that look like? Did you say, here are our top tracks, this is what we sing in the convent, and therefore we can put this on a record? Or did you have a discussion about what might work and what people might want to hear? We, I think what was very important for us was that we wanted to share something of our Franciscan charism. So St. Francis and St. Clair. Mm -hmm. So on the first album, there are some of the words of St. Francis and St. Clair are there. And we were helped to put that um, to music. And then... Uh... Now, I understand uh, that you occasionally danced the tunes of Bob Marley to relax. Yes, we are allowed to do that when we have recreations. Um, <laughs> Three Little Birds, I think, is the, is the one that we like. It um, gives us, like, circle dancing. So as a community, they're simple moves. So it doesn't matter how able or unable you are, everybody can join in. And, and that's great fun to do things as a community. And with this interest in both contemporary and traditional music, how important was it for you or how amazing was it for you to be involved with Abbey Road Studios? So it was amazing to visit Abbey Road Studio because for us, the reason why we went, we were invited by um, Decca so that we could hear our album on their sound system. It was the most amazing experience to just sit in this room and hear the sound all the way around, you know, from the ceiling and the sides of the wall. And we, a group of us were together. It was just wonderful. Well, and well. after we did that, of course, then we just had to go and step on that cross. <laughs> yes, we saw that. It was an amazing recreation of the uh, album cover. We should just, uh, viewers have just been seeing that image. There it is now. Brilliant. Um, and talk to me about what newfound fame means for you, because I'm told not a lot has changed. You've still got the work in the community. You run the small guest house there, don't you? And you work in Kenya. Um, has has the success of the album allowed you to do more of that? It's a difficult question to answer because in one sense, it's not touched what, the way we live our life. Um, we continue to just do our daily activities um, in cooking and cleaning and obviously going to church chapel to pray. Um, it's given us a lot more idea of um, people's pain, I think, with the way they have contacted us um, having heard the music and the way it has touched them. Mm. Um, so, it, in a way, it was us wanting to go out to people 
but that's been reciprocated in the fact that with you know phone calls well not so many phone calls but more emails and letters mm -hmm. um, people have contacted us to to share how the, the music has actually affected them um, mm -hmm. and been such a support um, help them in times of, of um, being down and sad mm -hmm. or in the way they're struggling with um, their own situations. Mm -hmm. um, so there's kind of been, although we haven't, we've not gone out. Um, we brought the world in, in really. That's yeah. what we've done. We brought the world into us. And um, the, the paradox, I think, is that when lockdown happened, everyone was isolated, they were at home, they were in their own homes. And here we are in our monastery where we usually, you know, live um, mm. without, and and, yeah. and then the world locked down and we sort of went out to the world from our monastery. It was extraordinary. Yeah. And bringing some solace as well when you did it. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining us. Sister Leo and Sister Gabriel, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. It was a pleasure. Our oh, pleasure is all mine. Uh, lovely to talk to them this morning. The uh, Paul Clare Sisters of Arundel's new album is called My Peace I Give You. It's out on May the 24th and the first single with the same title is out now.